What exactly are the coolest features in DaVinci Resolve Studio? Well, I don't know. Well, in this video, I'm going to be covering exactly that. This is my list of what I think might be the 10 biggest features in DaVinci Resolve Studio. My name's Dan, and you're watching Dan Vinci. <laughs> Let's kick it right off the bat with number one, which really I think is the best and I should have left till last. It's the magic mask. How about a magic trick? Now this is such a powerful tool. Now initially this was created to, well, do color grading, but you can use it for so many other things. It's insane. I've done a video on this. It was actually my first ever video and it did really, really well. But what exactly is the magic mask? The magic mask is effectively a selection tool. So let's say you want to select a certain subject in your frame, remove everything else. You can certainly do that. <laughs> So for example, as you can see right here, this is me, but then I can select myself and make myself blue. I'm blue as you can see on your screen now, this is exactly how I did it. Literally a case of selecting your object, clicking a button, letting it do its thing, and then you can make changes to that particular layer. Let's move on to number two. Number two, step forward. Now something that I think gets overlooked quite a bit in DaVinci Resolve Studio is its insanely powerful noise reduction. Now obviously if you push it to its limits, there is a limit, and you can easily cross it by making things look very, very waxy, like this. <laughs> But when you find the right balance with it, it's so, so powerful. Again, I've done a video on this. Links to that video will be in the description. I can't quite believe how many videos I've already made. Number three engine is down. Okay, so this one is something I discovered literally two weeks ago. And when doing my research on Studio for this video, I realized that this was actually a Studio feature and it was so useful for one of my projects recently. This D-Flicker, although it isn't perfect, it is damn near close. And I'll put on screen now some footage that is quite flickery. I'll whack on the D-Flicker on now and you'll see that there is a significant difference. From my experience, there is a little bit of ghosting in areas, but otherwise this is very, very close to perfect. Incredible incredible job Blackmagic. You've done an incredible job. Now number four is something that I completely discovered by accident. So what does this do? It's halation. Now I was just in the color tab and I was in the effects column and I was just scrolling through one day and then I came across this thing called halation. Kind of sounds like a movie poster. Halation. Halation is effectively, to dumb it down in simple terms, a glowing effect found in film. And I found that this makes your footage just a tiny bit better. It might be one of the smallest features on this list, but I think it has a massive impact. When you're looking at a shot that has it, it just looks a little bit more sparkly. It's really simple to apply in the color tab. Just drag it down to one of your nodes and adjust it accordingly. But it looks amazing. That was sick, Dwayne. That was awesome. Of course, I need to touch upon the Fairlight tab. I'm not going to miss you out, buddy. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory. Voice self-iso- Voice self-isolation? Isolate the audio. Voice isolation is what it says literally on the tin. It isolates the voice. Now, this is extremely useful, and I mean extremely useful, when you're in a loud environment or you have a persistent hum, for example. You can isolate your voice insanely well. Now, obviously, again, if you push it to the extremes, you sound like a robot. I'll be back. With a lot of compression, or at least it's sounds like that and this is something that I've had to use on a number of occasions when you know your microphone fails and all the rest of it. Here's a quick example of it in action. My name is Dan, this is certainly a test to see whether this well voice isolation works in DaVinci Resolve Studio. There's a lot of noise going on right now and let's let's see how good this is. As you can see I've just turned it on now and it certainly does do a very good job. It's not perfect but it is very very good and it can certainly save your footage. This is really weird. Okay, you can go back into your um, barn. Now, I haven't exactly done a video on this yet, but it'll be coming soon. So make sure you get subscribed because if you don't get subscribed, I'll track you down and I will search for your pet snake. I'm a snake. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. There's a big snake in the plane, Jack. Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie. Now, up there with some of the most impressive features DaVinci Resolve Studio has to offer, there is automatic subtitling. Now, if Magic Mask had a competitor for best feature on DaVinci Resolve, it would probably be the automatic subtitling. Now, I don't know about you, but I've used the Adobe Premiere subtitling and it's not exactly accurate. Sorry. <laughs> But when I say DaVinci Resolve Studios version of automatic subtitling is accurate, my God, is it accurate. In fact, all of the subtitles that you've seen up to this point have been unedited and are completely raw. So if there are any mistakes right now, then I'm going to be slightly embarrassed. 
Well, that was embarrassing. Optical flow. What is that? Now, if you've never heard of optical flow, this is an incredible cheat code if you want to have slow motion footage. Or let's say you've messed up and your frame rate was completely wrong. So you need to create some magical frames out of thin air. I conjured him. Scenario. Optical flow is your boy. In the inspector tab under video, scroll down to the very bottom and you'll go to retime and scaling. Here you'll see retime process. If you click this little button here and go down and click optical flow, this creates frames for you in between your other frames. Don't get technical with me. We're moving on to some more technical things, but don't worry, I'll make things simple. So my next point is hardware accelerated decoding and encoding. Now, what does that exactly mean, Dan? Well, the studio version of Resolve can perform encoding on multiple GPUs. That means, let's say you have two GPUs, you can render a video using two GPUs, which means it's going to be fast, real fast. <laughs> Now, of course, the free version can also encode video. Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be able to render the video, but you are only limited to one. One. What? But the main thing is that DaVinci Resolve Studio can also decode footage. This essentially means that you'll be able to play back footage in the codec of H.264 or H.265 way more smoothly. Now I'm really confused. And if you don't know what that essentially means, it means that your typical camera, let's say your typical sort of family camera that you have lying around the house, more likely than not, it's going to record in this codec, which means playback in real time in the timeline is going to be far smoother. That was smooth. That was very smooth. Okay, so on to the next point, timeline resolution. Basically, in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you are capped up to Ultra HD, which is this resolution on your screen now. But in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you almost have no limit, up to 32K at 120 FPS. Now, I must stress this, not many of you, if not none of you, are going to need 32K. Because if you have 32K, you're probably going to be able to see every imperfection on someone's face, and you can computer might go to Mars or it might just explode on the launch pad because my goodness would that be intense to run. Basically if you don't quite understand this this is huge because you are able to create a timeline in basically any aspect ratio in any shape that you need. So this is really important for let's say if you want to create TikTok content you'll be able to create a timeline which is perfect for the phone. Or let's say you've got footage from a drone that's shot at 5.7K, which a lot of consumer drones nowadays can do. You will be able to edit at 5.7K. All right, on to the final, final point. It's expanded format support and HDR delivery. I'll put on your screen now a list of various formats that DaVinci Resolve Studio supports. And if you don't know what HDR is, HDR stands for high dynamic range. But otherwise, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it informative, learned a little bit. And let me know if you're thinking of getting DaVinci Resolve studio. What are your thoughts on it? Is it worth it? My name's Dan. You're watching Dan Vinci and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.